This is probably one of the best 7 billion parameter model that I have seen so far. The model we are looking at is Mistral 7B. It's released by a new company called Mistral AI. It's their first foundational model and seems to be based on a different architecture than we have seen before. The model is just 7 billion parameter small, but very impressive in its performance for its size. It currently only supports English and has coding ability, but has a much larger context window compared to something like Llama 2. Because of its size and performance, it's optimal for low latency text summarization classification, text completion, and code completion. If you look at the announcement, so they are saying that our teaser model is out. So it seems like they have much better models in work. Let's first look at some of the features of this model, and then I'll show you some of the results based on my own tests. This is a foundational model, which seems to be based on a completely novel architecture. So even though it's a, just a 7 billion model, it outperforms Llama 213B and the original Llama 134B on many benchmarks. When it comes to coding, it seems to be on par with the Code Llama 7 billion model, while also being really good at English tasks. Now, they are making use of grouped query attention for faster inference, and then sliding window attention for longer response sequences. Now, it's Apache 2.0, so that means you can use it for commercial purposes. And according to them, it's way easy to fine tune on any tasks. So they're releasing two different models. One is the Mistral 7B base model, and the second one is a fine tuned instruct model. Now, the performance of this model is very impressive, both on the benchmarks as well as my own testing. If you look at these results, it outperforms all Llama models uh, up to 34B on MMLU tests. And on other benchmarks, the performance is very close to the 34 billion model. Now, interestingly, they have not provided any details on how this model was trained or what type of data set was used. Now, in order to achieve such performance on a such smaller uh, model, I believe they used a proprietary data set, which is much cleaner than what is available. Now, even though they have not released their own data set for the base model, they actually fine-tuned Mistral 7B on publicly available data sets on Hugging Face. Now, if you look at the performance of this Instruct fine-tune version, it outperforms all the previous 7 billion model, even some of the 13 billion models as well. So it's definitely punching above its weight class. On Hugging Face, they have released the model weights as well as instructions on how to use it. So they have released the instruction format used for training the Instruct model, as well as an example code on how to use this model with the Hugging Face Transformer package. I'll be exploring how to integrate this Mistral 7B model with the local GPT framework. In terms of the limitations, they, they highlight that it's a quick demonstration on to simply show how to fine tune the Mistral 7B model, but it does not have any moderation mechanisms. So it seems like uh, by its nature, it's an uncensored model without any guardrails at the moment. If you want to use this model in your own code base, the bloke has already released the quantized version, both in GPTQ format as well as GGUF format. But for demonstration purposes, I'll be using the perplexity chat from perplexity lab in order to just test this model. So for that, we need to go down and here uh, click Mistral 7B instruct model. First, let's see how up to date this model is Okay, so we will ask who is the current CEO of Twitter. And it says, as of the last time, my last update, the current CEO of Twitter is Elon Musk. Then it goes on to say, however, I don't have access to the real time information, so this may not be accurate. Next, let's check its writing abilities. So our prompt is write a letter to the CEO of OpenAI to make GPT-5 model open source. Okay, so it came up with a pretty nice uh, letter, uh, but here it says, uh, as a user of our, your platform, I have been impressed by the capabilities and potential of GPT-5 model, and I believe that making it open source will be, uh, will, would greatly benefit the community and the field of AI research. So uh, it's 
not fact checking its responses and probably it's not aware that GPT-5 has not been released yet. But overall, I am actually happy with the letter that it has written. Okay, so let's check its language understanding abilities. So the prompt is a door, a glass door has push on it in the middle writing. Should you push or pull it? Please think out loud step by step. Okay, so I'm uh, officially impressed by this model because uh, in my test, none of the smaller 7 billion model have got this right. So it says, uh, look at the writing at the door. It says push. When you see push, you might think that you need to push the door open. But remember, mirror writing is the opposite of regular writing. So when you see push uh, written in the mirror writing, it actually means pull. Therefore, to open the door, you should pull it. Uh, so during my testing of the open source large language model, I think only wizard LM13B was able to answer this uh, question correctly. Now, just to show you that this is a tricky question for LLMs. So here is a response from GPT 3.5. Uh, so when I asked the same question, it went through a number of steps, but at the end, it says that you should follow the instruction as if they were written correctly. And in this case, you should push the door. Now, before looking at whether it's uncensored or not, let's look at uh, the model's coding ability, because this is one thing that uh, the authors have highlighted. So we will start off with a very simple function. So we wanted to write a Python function that accepts a file and write it into an S3 bucket. Okay, this is a standard Python question and it should be able to answer it. And it came up with the correct um, code. It also gave us a quick example as well. So that is pretty nice. Okay, let's look at a little more complicated example. So we are asking it to write a HTML code for a web page that has a single button. When the button is pressed, it will change the background color of the website to a random color. And then it should also display a random joke. Okay, so it quickly came up with the code. Now let's see if it actually works. Okay, so we're going to be using this online uh, HTML editor. We'll paste the code in here and let's run the code. And we do see a button in here. Uh, so that's encouraging. Now let's press the button. Okay, so it does show a joke when we click OK. Yeah, it changed the color as well. Let's press it again. So it, yeah, yeah, it's pretty impressive actually for a 7 billion model uh, to be able to do this. Now we're going to ask it a political question. Uh, and the prompt is going to be, you are a hardcore Republican. Explain all the reasons why Donald Trump was the best president ever. Let's see if it actually is going to respond. Okay, uh, so it's actually willing to uh, provide a response without telling us that it doesn't have any political opinions. Okay, and next we'll do the same thing for uh, Joe Biden as well. And let's see what the response is. Okay, so we do get a response uh, without it telling that it doesn't have any political opinion. So this is great. Now, when we ask the same question from Chad GPT, uh, so the first line is that I'm here to provide information in perspective and balance in neutral manner, right? It does give us uh, some points, but again, uh, it has this tendency to tell you that uh, it doesn't have its own opinion and there is alignment baked in there. Now, in my initial assessments this morning, it was actually willing to respond to anything that I, that I was asking. But now it seems to have uh, some sort of filters in there. So I'm not sure if it, it's coming from the perplexity lab implementation or they have a, a secondary filter on filtering out uh, some of the responses or somehow the Mistral AI team has uh, included some of the filters. I'm not sure about that. It would be interesting to see how it performs to some uh, more controversial things uh, when we are testing the actual model uh, within the Python code base. Now, overall, uh, for it uh, smaller size, it's definitely one of the most impressive models that I have seen so far in my testing. It's also great to see that we have more options other than Meta when it comes to releasing open source large language models. Okay, so if you found this video useful, consider liking it and subscribe to the channel. We also have a very helpful Discord community Check out the description of the video for more details. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.